Welcome to Connecting with God from Thoughts in Solitude by the Reverend Thomas Merton, Vegetarian, Part 2 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. The Reverend Thomas Merton, an important Catholic mystic and spiritual thinker, was born in 1915 to an American mother and a New Zealand father. The many life situations he encountered in his youth led him to explore religion and spirituality and eventually to devote his life to God by becoming a monk and later a deacon at the Abbey of Gethsemane, a part of the Order of Trappists in Kentucky, USA. He also enjoyed living alone in a hermitage in the monastery's wilderness area. During his monastic life, Thomas Merton developed his writing talent by translating religious texts and writing biographies. He also penned poetry, as well as books and articles on topics ranging from spirituality to social justice and peace. One of Merton's most famous statements was, for me to be a saint means to be myself. Therefore, the problem of sanctity and salvation is in fact the problem of finding out who I am and of discovering my true self. He also said, we are living in a world that is absolutely transparent and God is shining through it all the time. This is not just a nice story or a fable, it is true. Believing in the equality of all religions, Thomas Merton became deeply interested in Eastern traditions in the later years of his life. He also held lively discourses with His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. Today, the life and works of the wise reverend are still studied at the Thomas Merton Center in Kentucky, USA, and the International Thomas Merton Society. Let us continue with selections from Thomas Merton's book, Thoughts in Solitude, where the wise reverend expounds on gratitude for God's love and care. Part 2, The Love of Solitude, Chapter 12. The solitary, being a man of prayer, will come to know God by knowing that his prayer is always answered. From there, he can go on, if God wills, to contemplation. Gratitude is therefore the heart of the solitary life, as it is the heart of the Christian life. From his first day in solitude, the hermit should set his heart upon understanding how to afflict his whole being with tears and desire before God. Then he will be like Daniel, to whom the angel brought God's answer, Daniel 10.12. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand, to afflict thyself in the sight of thy God, thy words have been heard. Chapter 13 It seems to me that the solitary contemplative life is an imitation and fulfillment in ourselves of these words of Jesus, the Son can do nothing of himself, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever he does, this the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself does. John 5, 19 through 20. This imitation consists in being and acting in the same relation to Jesus as Jesus to the Father. John 5:24. He who hears my word and believes him who sent me has life everlasting. The Father draws us to Jesus. John 6:37, 6, 6:44-45. Everyone who has listened to the Father and has learned comes to me. We listen to the Father best in solitude. Jesus is the bread of life given to us in solitude. John 6:58. As the living Father has sent me, and as I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also shall live because of me. The solitary life, then, is the life of one drawn by the Father into the wilderness, there to be nourished by no other spiritual food than Jesus. For in Jesus the Father gives himself to us, and nourishes us with his own inexhaustible life, the life of solitude, therefore, must be a continual communion and thanksgiving in which we behold by faith all that goes on in the depths of God and lose our taste for any other life or any other spiritual food. Also, it seems to me that the solitary life fulfills the above text by the psalmist. But I am a beggar and poor, the Lord is careful for me. 39.18 
We live in constant dependence upon this merciful kindness of the Father, and thus our whole life is a life of gratitude, a constant response to his help, which comes to us at every moment. I think everyone finds this out in any vocation, provided it is his true vocation. The solitary life is a life in which we cast our care upon the Lord and delight only in the help that comes from him. Whatever he does is our joy. We reproduce his goodness in us by our gratitude, or our gratitude is the reflection of his mercy. It is what makes us like him. The truly solitary life has a completely different character from the pastoral solitude, which can be enjoyed from time to time in the intervals allowed by social living. When we receive our solitude by intervals, we taste its value by contrast with another value. When we really live alone, there is no contrast. I must not go into solitude to immobilize my life to reduce all things to a frozen concentration upon some inner experience. When solitude alternates with common living, it can take on this character of a halt, of a moment of stillness, an interval of concentration, where solitude is not an interval but a continuous whole, we may well renounce altogether the sense of concentration and the feeling of spiritual stillness. Our whole life may flow out to meet the being and the silence of the days in which we are immersed, and we can work out our salvation by quiet, continued action. It is even possible that in solitude I shall return to my beginning and rediscover the value and perfection of simple vocal prayer and take greater joy in this than in contemplation. The solitary must be a man who has the courage to do the thing he most wants in the world to do, to live in solitude. It requires heroic humility and heroic hope, the hope that God will protect him against himself, that God loves him so much that he will accept such a choice as if it were his own. Such hope is a sign that the choice of solitude is God's choice, that the desire for solitude is possibly a divine vocation that it implies the grace to please God by making our own decisions in the uncertainty of an everlasting silence that never approves or disapproves a single choice we make. I should be able to return to solitude each time, as to the place I have never described to anybody, as the place which I have never brought anyone to see, as the place whose silence has mothered an interior life known to no one but God alone. For more information about Thomas Merton, vegetarian, please visit merton.org. Vegan, because a flesh and blood filled mouth reminds people of demons. Generous viewers, it was a pleasure that you could join us today for Words of Wisdom 